So we're looking at blocks. When you're using HTML for your web page, you have to create blocks, which is going to hold maybe certain areas of text, uh, might, might hold graphics, uh, might just hold a uh, solid color that you've decided to you know, designate an area with a certain color. So when you have uh, a block, which the way it's created is with a div tag in HTML. And as in all other HTML, you have an open and a closing tag. So you'd have the open div tag and the closed div tag. So you want to do a lot of blocks. You would uh, do your div tags like this. And your, and your blocks would appear this way, separate. So by doing it that way, you could you know, do different colors or different sizes or whatever. So div tags, you know, make up a lot of uh, what you see when you're looking at a website because a website is basically, you know, it's a grid. It's basically blocks. Now, what it is that is going to um, style these blocks, you know, give it color, height, width, or whatever is going to be CSS. So when you're, when you're looking at CSS, it basically will look like this. You have your selector, which in this case would be a person. If you wanted to say a person was purple, using CSS, this is how you do it. Color is the properties. Purple is the value. And color purple is what you call a declaration. So say I wanted, I had a car, and I wanted to, I guess you'd say style it, the information that you'd give. So here, car, make, Chevrolet, model, Corvette, color, black, engine, 454. You know, as far as CSS is concerned, I'm just trying to explain how it works. But in, as far as CSS is concerned, Mostly what you'd be concerned with here is the visuals or the size and everything, really not the engine. The engine would, in, in HTML, would make no difference whatsoever, or the make being a Chevrolet, uh, or the model being Corvette. So that's basically what you call these. Notice that you see make, semicolon, Chevrolet, then colon. That's a declaration. So the colon, uh, after the colon, you can do a whole nother declaration. Model, Corvette, you know, after that colon, color, black. So you can add them on. Um, CSS isn't super complicated. It's just a lot of different uh, types of uh, kind of terminologies and things like that to remember as far as what the, uh, you know, if you're trying to figure out properties or So say if you look in your Dreamweaver CS6 code section, you'll see a P, and it'll be right before the, uh, like a paragraph. So what this is doing here, that's what's called the selector, the P, the car, person. The selector is going to make everything that falls within that P, Font family times New Roman, font size 20 pix. Pixels high, rather. So uh, you're, they're on two separate lines, and you know, white space doesn't make a, a big difference here. They could have been on one line. So now I'm going to go into Dreamweaver. That's a little bit on CSS. Like I was saying, it's not really, really, really co complicated. Um, you know, once you have the basic formula down, it's, you know, it, a lot of it is just remembering what the different uh, properties are and things like that. And the one good thing about Dreamweaver is that it gives you a, uh, a cues. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new HTML, and I'm not even going to use a template because I'm going to use something called uh, absolute positioning. So notice uh, like the last from the last uh, 
screencast I did, I set up the panels to just show three panels up here, CSS, files, and insert, and uh, you know the properties panel down the bottom, which I actually pulled out. So up to the layout here, I'm going to, instead of common, I'm going to use layout. and do draw AP div. So what you're doing here is you're drawing your own div. And it's called absolute positioning because wherever you put this div is going to be where it's going to show up. So look over here. You see right here over in the HTML. It gave it its own name. Down in the properties panel you can see the name. You can change the name if you want to, uh, and most people will in the in the interest of being organized and doing things without getting all that frustrated, but I'm not going to change this. So notice that you have you have all your position, absolute, left, 183 pixels. It's uh, 109 pixels from the top. And the z-index, you'll see later is used when you it layers things. So I'm getting a one on here. If I put something on top of something and I want it underneath, that's when I change the Z index. You know, you can go up, you can go one, two, three, four, depending on how many things you have. Basically experiment with it and you'll see how it works. It's actually pretty easy. If I wanted to go beneath something, I'll change the Z index, maybe on both things. So Here's my, like I was saying, here's my uh, CSS. Everything I want to look at right here. Now, if I come over into my CSS styles palette, I see app div right here. And I see all my uh, properties for it right down here. C index and everything. If I want to add something, what I'm going to add first is I'm just going to add a picture. So I'm going to go back to the insert. I'm going to go to common. And we have images. I have a little picture I'm going to put in. Sorry for the delay. Okay, I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, so there it is. So notice it's right against the border. So think of when you're doing when you're doing text, uh, and say you have two columns or two divs that that are right against each other. You wouldn't want the text to be right touching the very edge of the actual div box because it might end up looking like one big long sentence. So this is where padding comes in. So I'm going back to CSS, going back to app diff, which is what this is. And I'm going to add a property. I'm going to add padding. So I don't see any, you know, I don't see anything. And like I was t telling you about cues, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scroll right up padding I'll do padding top and do say five pixels. So that's very small. You can see you can see the padding. It's I guess I should do more than that. I'll do ten. Now you can see it better. So that's from the top. So I'm going to do padding on the side. Back to padding. And we'll do padding left. Say do 15. So I've got uh, 10 on the top, 15 on the side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a background color. Go to Add Property. And 
right, scroll, 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 scroll. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Now I have a color picker. So I'll do a color like that. So now I can go in and I can add text if I wanted to, or I can even go back to insert, go to layout again, go back to draw AP div, select that. Now here's where the um, the Z index comes in if, if there were to be problems with this. So notice that you know we just got this new div ID. The ID is what is going to is going to um, tell you in the CSS. You know this is two as opposed to one. So I'm going to go to CSS again. I'm going to go to add property. If you know what the what the uh, CSS is, you can just type it in yourself. But I'm just going to scroll up. Time, kind of time consuming. There's a, this is what I mean about CSS isn't really super complicated. It's just remember. It's just remembering all these things. There. So you can imagine, even if you're using a template, you're able to use this uh, absolute positioning, say, to make your own um, uh, block across the bottom that's going to give you a horizontal navigation, nav navigation links. So it's a pretty useful tool. Whoop. Something disappeared. Okay, there it is. So, what do we have as the index? Oh, that's way too much, but it works. I didn't have to go that high. Uh, so, like I was telling you before, the Z index, if there's any problem with layers, you know, it's almost like Photoshop where you're grabbing a layer, you're pulling a layer down below something, and you don't see it anymore. So, this should help a little bit, I hope. Thanks. Bye.